our wow word today is giving. Here is a little story about an encounter on the London Tube. The man stood in the tube yesterday, rush hour, between King's Cross and Caledonian Road Station. The train arrives, the doors open, he gets on, the doors close, and the train pulls out into the tunnel. All of a sudden somebody stands up. Excuse me, he says, and suddenly everybody looks up. He's a big man, white, late twenties, ginger hair, tracksuit bottoms, and a t-shirt. Is he a terrorist? I don't want to embarrass anyone, he said, but I'm homeless, so if anyone has any money or an excess of food or water, I'd be grateful. Thank you. Silence. Heads down in laps. You know how it is. Then a gradual communal return to Kindles, evening standards, office reports, etc. Relief he isn't a terrorist, for sure. But does he have to bring his problems here when we've all had a hard day at work? No one's giving anything. Not the day, chummy. A sense of irritation, maybe. The homeless man wanders forward, and oh, a young Polish man, who from his clothes must be in the building trade, puts two pound in the man's begging bowl, which is a polystyrene coffee cup. It's all about that first contribution because as he eases himself back down the carriage, an older lady, perhaps in her seventies, fumbles for change and puts it in the cup. He thanks her with a nod. I decide to contribute. I'll do it as I get off at the next stop. This is what I'm thinking. And then behind him a black man in a suit hands over a twenty-pound note. Twenty pounds? Now things have changed. Do I still give? It's been a good two minutes for our friend. Does he still need me? The train pulls into Caledonian Road Station. I get up to leave. Yes, of course I contribute, because not every two minutes will have been like this one. Was he homeless? I don't know. The genius of his speech lay in the final phrase when he mentioned an excess of food or water. And out of a thirty or so in the carriage, Four of us said yes. When we got home, of course, we heard of the savage killing in Woolwich. On our way there, however, we saw a little trust and a little money shared in a London tube, King's Cross, the Caledonian Road. Mind the gap in wealth. Now back to our wow word today, which is giving. Giving is seemingly one of the three forbidden subjects for Christians to discuss in the 21st century. The other two being sex and power. Unsurprisingly, Jesus talked about all three of these often. Every person has in differing quantities time, talent, possessions and money. In relationship to giving, the church is to be a community where the strongest members support the weakest members. This applies not only to the local church, but also at a national and international level as well. Too often, even as Christian disciples, we are found turning a blind eye to the suffering of others where the bare necessities of life are in sparse existence. Too often we gather possessions and people instead of giving up our time and money generously to help the poor and the needy of both our world, national and local communities. Too often we as the church keep our time and talent selfishly to ourselves instead of giving them to others in need. Perhaps the greatest indicator of spiritual growth in the follower of Jesus, the Christian disciple, concerns their giving particularly their financial giving. Paul, writing to the Corinthians, commands that giving is to be done wholeheartedly and cheerfully. Wow! For the Christian disciple, it's not so much how much is given, but how much is left after giving. God looks beyond the amount that is given 
to the motive and attitude behind the giving. All of our money, time, talents and possessions belong to God anyway, so our giving is to be in response to this. Giving is to be done out of love for God. Paul offers in 1 Corinthians chapter 16 verse 2 a three-point system for giving financially, regularly, methodically and proportionately. Failure to give back to God's work for what he has given the Christian disciple in the first place robs God. The reason that it robs God is because the giving cannot be used to support those who are working for God. As a result of giving, the Christian disciple is blessed and they will have their needs satisfied. In the Old Testament, widows were important to God. They were important to God because justice is important to God, just as he is a God of perfect justice and consummate mercy. In the Old Testament, under the law of Moses, God commanded provision for those who are widows, oppressed or uncared for. The people of Israel were to love their neighbours as they loved themselves, often forgotten. The twelve apostles would have known about God caring for the widows, particularly through Jesus' teaching about justice for the poor and the oppressed. We know this because if you read the book of Acts, people were selling and sharing possessions and ensuring that all people within the Christian community were being looked after and cared for. This included making sure that everyone got fed, particularly those who had no family to care for them. And it wasn't just for those within the church, but also from the wider community. People were exclaiming how much these people, the church, loved God because they were loving other people, including those outside the church. The New Testament church made sure that financial giving was done, and that the poor, the oppressed, the lonely and the widows were taken care of. People gave, people sold to give. And Paul in Romans chapter 12 verses 6 to 8 places giving as a spiritual gift. Did you know that? I wonder how many people have asked specifically for that particular gift. Perhaps it's the least asked for gift. After all, it isn't one of the supposedly spectacular ones, is it? So let's get to the nitty gritty. Each of us has, in varying quantities, time, talents, possessions and money. How is your giving of those to others doing? God gave everything so that you and I may have life and life in abundance. So by giving generously of our time, our talents, our possessions and our finances, we are simply reflecting that. God gave and gives generously. God gave his son as a ransom for sin so that we may have life. And if you have run out of ideas about how to give from what you have, ask God to show you and give you some creative ideas. God is a creative God. So go live, go give. How's that for a wow word?